Welcome back to Take Me Out to the Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Hamby. With me today is special guest, Ryan Williams. Ryan, how are you? You ready to talk some baseball? I'm ready. Thank you for having me. Of course. Uh, we'll start uh, with your team, unfortunately, making their exit from baseball's postseason, that, of course, being the Tampa Bay Rays. Yep. Um, a, a tough one uh, last night against the Red Sox, losing in four. Uh, just give me your initial thoughts on the season as a whole, and um, we'll, we'll jump into game three specifically uh, here in a minute, but give me your initial thoughts on just the season as a whole and how it ended. The, uh, the season as a whole is a tremendous success. They went from um, – the roster is very different from what it started with, at least from week one um, or game one, I should say, to now. They, I think they pitched 60 different pitchers during the year. That's a, that's a pretty short shelf life, and that's a lot of injuries to go through. So they definitely weathered that. 100 wins, most in franchise history. Um, promising young prospects. Obviously, the postseason ended shorter than they wanted to, but they ran into a Red Sox team that is a um, buzzsaw, to say the least, right now. So Yeah, so, so game three, um, it's a close one, and we see you know the ball hits off Renfro, the Red Sox right fielder. Uh, and goes over the fence. Kiermaier was on first, and he was going to score by all accounts. I mean, it's, it's, it'd be tough to argue anything else that he was Young going to is. score. But um, because the ball hit, bounced off of him over the fence, the ruling was that Kiermaier had to go back to third. And so they had second, third with two out and didn't, didn't end up scoring. Um, give me your thoughts on that. Yeah. So it was actually Kiermaier to hit the ball. Yanni Diaz on first that had to go back. Right. right. Um, I mean, the rule is what it is. I mean, it it was clearly unintentional by Renfro. It just skipped up on a short hop and caught it and went over. I mean, really, it's just a it's just a bad break. Maybe a flaw in the rule. I don't know, but I, I don't know if they've even ever had a scenario like that where the ball short hopped the fielder. You know, if the fielder isn't there, that ball is ricocheting, you know, back into the right center field gap, but it didn't, so – you know, you think this you is a situation where they should maybe change it to the umpire's discretion? Um, because I mean, seriously, I mean, uh, Yanni would score, y'all would take the lead, and Kiermaier would be probably on third base, yeah, instead of second. Do you think this is a situation where you, you wish they'd just go back in and, and potentially change it to if, if that happens? Uh, in the future, then it's just an umpire's discretion based off of where the runners were at the time where the ball went over the fence. Yeah, of course, hindsight's twenty twenty, but I would, I, I do think that's a, a fair rule, at least discretion for the umpires. Um, it's such a tough one. I would, you would have to see other similar plays lined up and how the ruling on those played out. But a ball, a fair ball in play, you would think, I don't know, that's such a tough one because you know, obviously, like. An overthrow into the dugout is two bases. You know how that all works, right? So I I don't know how they how they would change that honestly, yeah. but I would like to see discretion, of course, because I mean that play is a tough one, tough one to swallow, right? Um, with the starting pitching of the Rays, okay, so McClanahan starts go uh, game one and goes five innings. That was the most they got out of a starter all series. No other starter game two, three, and four made it out of the third. And I, and I know it's the Rays' recipe for success. They did it all year, and it worked, obviously. They had the most wins in franchise history, like you said, 100. Uh, and, it, and, it, and it worked, and it worked, and it worked. But in the postseason, I think we've seen in plenty of the past years where it's a lot tougher to throw five, six, seven pitchers in a game and win. because And, we, and we've seen where, where dominant starting pitching added by the bullpen at the end – has been a has been a, a the bigger recipe of success in the postseason. Do you wish the Rays? And I know they were shorthanded, of course, with Glass now being out. And I mean, everybody, every starter they had is like 22, 23, 24 years old. Is is real young. Do you wish they would have gone out and got another guy? Do you wish that they would have just let these guys go a little bit longer? What are your thoughts on that? Of course. Of course, we, as a, the Rays fan base as a whole, we were hoping to see a veteran starter come in during free agency 
And we actually dealt our only veteran starter and said that was Rich Hill, who I'm not disagreeing with that decision at all. That decision's just fine by me as far as I'm concerned. Um, they used Rasmussen, who was previously in the pen, who they brought out to be a starter, built him up to around 85 pitches. But they were hoping to get five innings from all these guys, 15 outs from all these guys. And if they do, they trust the back end of that bullpen to take them and live up to their 3.29 ERA that they proved throughout the year. Um, yeah, they got hit around. I mean, I, 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 I'm going to have to chalk this one up to the Red Sox. It's no surprise. We can't throw a pitcher they haven't seen so far this year. They know all of us. We know all of them. They're an absolute buzzsaw. If you watch the game, they hit balls hard. If, and if they didn't find a gap, they found someone. So, yes, you would like to see have a guy who can get you seven. That's, of course, really nice. But I think the recipe of getting 15 outs from the starter and the bullpen taking you for the final, you know, four innings is a recipe that they could have dealt with. But it just wasn't there, especially with the two games on, off day. You can get guys rested back up sure. for sure. Yeah, just for, for me, obviously not a fan of the Rays, but it seemed like your expectations for the postseason this year only could have been so high with the knowledge that, okay, game three, we're throwing out Shane Baz, who is who has all the talent in the world, and we know that. And, and this guy is going to be incredible um, from just the eye test of watching him over, the, I mean, the last month. But you're throwing a guy who's only made how many starts in the in, in the big leagues? Four, made, five starts. He made three, and the and the third start was a let you let's get three innings, and then we're going to take you out so you can get ready for the postseason. Right. So I mean, going in, you're throwing him game three. It's just like okay, like even if he even if he comes out in the ALDS and does what what you you know the peak of what he you wish he would do. It's not that repeatable just because he's a young guy. He doesn't have – Yeah. I mean, they're, what you're asking him to do is well over whatever he could uh, expect. Yeah, absolutely. And their recipe there, the strategy going into that game was he just faced his in his debut uh, a really good Blue Jays lineup, gave up two runs over five innings and only two hits, um, and then struck out nine his next appearance. And, yes – and they used him in the role where, okay, we're going to give him game two at home under our fan base, go out there and throw strikes. Well, they hit him for, they gave nine hits on him and uh, three runs or something like that. I mean, what, I mean, they just hit the ball hard off of him. You had to pull him out at that point. So yes, it's not ideal. However, he, his talent was so good. They had to find a way to put him in there. Yeah. Yeah. You can't disagree with the talent. Uh, I think the, the Reds were just one, Honestly, I think they're two starting pitchers away. And I think going forward over into next season and in the and in the future, all these guys, Rasmussen, Baz, even Patino, Patino, um, these are this is gonna help them out. Uh, yeah. this this short lived postseason experience will certainly help them out going into next year. And I think this could be because the Rays last year, they had Glass now and Snell. But Glass now was really the only dependable guy. And, and Charlie. I, and, and Charlie. Right. And, and as a Braves fan, we appreciate you letting him walk. Yep. But I think that these next – these three guys, Baz, Russ Musson, Patino, that could become an even better one, two, three punch than what we saw last year when y'all went to the World Series. I, I would have to agree. And once they – once Patino learns how to throw strikes – guy's stuff is unbelievable so if, if any team can can get efficient starts out of a of a team or player development yeah it's the Rays, no doubt yeah and yeah the rays have given us no reason to not trust that they're gonna make these prospects hey, this summers. year this year was supposed to be a, a a rebuild year as they'd say we had to uh replenish and we won 100 games so yeah it's only up from there uh, moving over to the other ALDS matchup, it's the Astros and the White Sox. That game is game four is actually underway right now. Um, the Astros are up two to one in the series. Uh, this game is is a home game for the, the White Sox. The White Sox were my pick to, to go to the World Series and represent the American League. Obviously going down 2-0, um, that looked like uh, quite a cold take. But, I mean, 
it, I mean, it's in, like we've seen in every postseason. It's it's who can get the timely hit, and they just weren't able to do that in games one and two. I mean, I, let me bring this up. So um, before the Red Sox game last night, American League postseason games were averaging 11 and a half runs a game. In the National League, only five runs a game. That's crazy to me. Yep, and we saw that again last night with 11 runs in the Rays game and one run combined in the Dodgers-Giants game. Exactly, and it's such a stark contrast. In the National League, you have all these guys going six, seven innings, all these big starting pitchers, and um, and and you're 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 celebrating if you get you scratch uh, two runs off. Mm. And in the American League, it's it's totally different. You're just having to outscore teams. Yeah, I wish I had a I wish I had a better answer for you for that. But um, a lot of people would love to say the DH and the pitching spot. And yes, it's nearly an automatic out in uh, the National League. And when those positions come up in high leverage situations, oftentimes it's it's to the advantage of the pitching team. And you saw JD Martinez have an effect on the game last night, especially in a, a game two in Tampa when he had a three run homer. Right. So maybe you maybe you point to something like that, but yeah, the, it's a massive, massive difference between the two games, and I don't, I'm not quite sure how to figure that. I mean, what what do you what would you say? What, what's your analysis on that? I mean, honestly, I just think that there's better starting pitching. Just the the, the players are just better in the National League. I mean, game three or four or yeah, game four last night, the Red Sox started Ed, Eduardo Rodriguez, right? Okay, game four. For uh, for the Dodgers, there's I mean they're throwing game three Scherzer, game four they're coming back with Bueller. Yeah, I mean and and their fourth best if they would have had Kershaw was a twenty game winner in Jose Urias. Yeah, I mean, no, it, no doubt about that. No doubt right. about that for sure. So and so, I would ahead. like to say that you could argue the White Sox might have as good as good a start of pitching and bullpen as any team, and they find themselves down two to one right now and a developing thing that I find crazy is the postponement last night allows Houston with another day of rest instead of pitching your key you're now getting McCullers back out there for game four on the road to force a you know a potential yeah. punch to the ALCS that's that's crazy and and Rodon hasn't started yet which is weird to me mm-hmm. which I I don't know why I should, yeah. but Rodon's he's their best pitcher. Time. He was out for a long time at the end of the season, battling injuries. He was on a one pitch max this series. So he was going to pitch one game this series, no matter if he pitched game one, he wasn't going to throw again game five. That was the circumstance. Okay. That's what they said before. Um, I'm guessing they're trying to manage his, maybe his innings, his workload, his pitch count. I'm not yeah. exactly sure, but something with that injury, I think it was a shoulder. I could, I'm pretty sure it was a shoulder. They're trying to fill him out through the postseason for sure. Right. Yeah. And, and like you said, the White Sox might have the best rotation in the American League and bullpen, other mm-hmm. than the Rays. I said the Rays is bullpen is better. But I mean, the back end of Kimbrell and, and Liam Kendricks is about as good as it gets. The five, six, seven guys are better for the Rays. Inning guys would be better for the Rays. And that's why I picked the White Sox to represent uh, the. American League, but game one, game two, I mean, Kimbrell gets shelled. I mean, the Astros are just putting up runs at will, yeah. and and that's just how it shook out. What do you, uh, I know game four is happening right now. We got uh, Rodon versus – you said it was – McCullers. McCullers, yeah. They were going to go with Urquidy, um, but the, the postponement allows them. Dude, McCullers is, is, is a weird starting pitcher. You're not sure what you're going to get, but when he's on – there's few better. He's on. Yeah, for sure. He's a guy who's like going to gut it out and grind it out. He throws, he can get you the ground ball. He can get you the fly ball. I think he's a great number one. I think he's going to be great for that rotation in the long run. And Fran Valdez has proven that he's comes alive in the postseason. So they might have a nice little one, two punch. And that back end of that bullpen is sketchy in the five and six innings, seven innings. But whenever you can get it to, Graveman and Ryan Presley, who's been there, done that. Feel pretty good about your chances of getting getting a win whenever you get back there. For sure, for sure. It'll be interesting to see um, 
either of these teams against the Red Sox. I think mm -hmm. I just haven't seen the White Sox play their best baseball yet. I think we've seen, we saw the Astros do that in game one and game two. Um, so if the White Sox, I mean, I, I want to see game five. I mean, that's what, when, when you're a neutral fan, you, you don't have any tendency towards either team. You want to see as much baseball as possible. So I'm rooting for the White Sox today just to get to a game five, which would either be tomorrow or Thursday. Moving over to the National League, we'll start with the Dodgers and the Giants. Uh, the Giants were able to squeak out a one nothing victory over the Dodgers last night, taking a 2-1 to -one lead. And this is the – the Dodgers have sco haven't scored in the last two games. Game yeah. two, they got shut out uh, four to nothing. And then last night against Alex Wood and, and the, the, I mean, we saw Taylor Rogers in the fifth inning. That was the earliest he'd ever pitched in a game this season. And, uh, and then we go to um, Jake McGee in the seventh and this, whoever this Doval guy is, I mean, he just yeah. came up. And he's throwing 100, and he gives him six crucial outs at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, the Dodgers, how big is Max Muncy not being in the lineup? It's massive. If you think about the repercussions of that, he's a guy who we all know is going to go up there. He's going to work that pitch count. for the. I mean, he might see eight pitches in at bat almost. Yeah. You know, he's going to work a full count if he's not getting a hit. He's not swinging at the first pitch. He's – He's going to drive that pitch count up, and that's something you really need, especially when you're trying to get into these guys' bullpen in the five, fifth and sixth inning. It is so crucial, and that means you have to play. Although he's played decent so far this series, Cody Ballinger, and you can't platoon him anymore. Right. For, I mean, he's been a liability in the regular season. There's no, no way around that. He's just having a tough year. Happens, but that's a, that's a, that's a massive key. I mean, missing him is – they put up zero runs. This right. guy, I'm, I don't know what his WRC is, but I'm sure it is in the top percentile of the league. Yeah. Honestly, it just seems like he's got a knack for the postseason too. I mean, he's always yeah. going deep, hitting also, big home runs. I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention who is the Giants killer on the Dodgers? Who hit eight home runs and 60 at-bats this year against the, Dod or against the Giants? I'm sorry. Max Muncy. Yeah. If there's anyone that loves to play the Giants, it's Max Muncy. Sure. Yeah. And, and it's and it's interesting too because I mean, and and we we saw it all year. The Dodgers are running out Scherzer, Bueller, Urias, and and the Giants. I'm not sure how many fans of just a particular team who are not big baseball fans knew who Logan Webb was mm -hmm. going into Game One, and he throws a gem. Absolutely, yeah. Logan Webb just an unbelievable, just an unbelievable talent to come through for them. Um, and just bridges that gap between their starting pitching and their bullpen just as good as anyone. I mean, they might have – like winning this game against, against Scherzer is so big because you got Alex Wood. You sent Alex Wood out there, and he got you a win. Yeah. It's massive. I'm not, he made Scherzer, the, the Dodgers hadn't lost a game with Scherzer on the mound. That's, that's crazy. Unbelievable. And he, and he pitched a fantastic game. And the difference was a – Longoria home run in which he got all of it. Yeah. And did you see Gavin Lux's hit at the end of the game? Yep. Nine, I think it was like a 98% chance of being a base hit or something like that. And it was 106 off the bat to the left field. And it was howling in. Yeah. Howling in. Man, it seems like the Giants are just poised for it this year. Somehow, some way, it's just going to go their way. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever seen the wind have that much of an effect on so many fly balls as I did last mm -hmm. night. In game four tonight, uh, the Giants are sending out Anthony DiScofani. Um, the Dodgers haven't announced who they're going with. I, I'm not really sh even sure. I mean, it might just be a bullpen game for them. Mm -hmm. But DiScofani at the beginning of the year was, was phenomenal. Uh, he, bought, he battled a hamstring injury towards the latter part of the year. I kind of I mean, he, he didn't, couldn't really get in a rhythm because he was starting a the game, then out for a couple of weeks and then try to come back and then had to hit the shelf again. Yeah. Um, but if we learn anything is that these Giants pitchers, they don't care about anything. They're going out and they're giving you six shutout innings or whatever it is. Yeah. 
but I think I think the Dodgers lineup is too good to get to be blanked three straight times, and I think they're got to come up, kind of going to come up with a lot of runs tonight. And they're going to grit their way. Yeah, you're right. You're right. There was chances in that game. There was hard hit, hard hit baseballs that just didn't find holes. And over a five game series, those are going to find the gap. At some point in time, those are going to those are going to land. They're going to put some runs up. I don't know if they're going to get it done this game because it's a it's a winner go home and you just don't know. But it's just crazy what the Giants are able to do. It just just don't count them out at any yeah. point. You just can't stop, count them. Out. Stop betting against them because yeah. they will just continue to prove that you're wrong time and yeah. time again. Moving over to the last divisional matchup, it's my Braves against the Brewers. Uh, the Brewers took game one from us, two to one. They threw Corbin Burns, and we couldn't touch him. Um, they, I mean, it's this is the the series that has featured the least amount of runs. I mean, you get out to a two nothing lead early in the ball game, and you're thinking, oh my gosh, like that's it feels like five or six. Mm-hmm. Game one, it was zero zero going into the seventh. Charlie. Um, Charlie Morton had thrown a gym. He made one mistake in the game, and the Brewers made him pay at a two-run bomb in the seventh. And mm-hmm. uh, other than a Jock Peterson pinch hit homer, we couldn't cash in in the ninth, and we had a couple guys on, lost that one. Came back game two with Max Freed, who has been unbelievable in the second half in the last month in particular. Yes. He's sure. throwing four pitches. And he, it feels like he just knows exactly where it's going, and he's hitting his spot every time. I don't know if I've seen that the amount of command from a guy in a, in a long time and is so young that is not, you know, a Cy Young contender every year. But I think he will be in the next few years. I think he's proving that. We were able to get that win last um, – on Saturday. And then yesterday we threw Ian Anderson. Big game, Ian. The guy – I mean, he's like – Three and zero and five postseason starts, mm-hmm. and, and this is just his second full year in the league, and he was hurt for a lot of it. And another, you know, three one three zero win, just like game two. Lack of offense, but is it is it entertaining for a non a non Braves or Brewers fan? Absolutely, I I love as I love to watch the Brewers pitching. It is. Fantastic. And when they hand it over to the formidable force and, and Josh Hader, game's over. And losing Devin Williams is massive for them. Because yeah. then you can cut that inning one inning short. You hand it over in the eighth inning to a guy who'd be a closer on 28 of 30 ball clubs. It, it's, it's just unbelievable. However, I think the Braves lineup is one through eight, you know, is better. I like Jock off the bench. It seems like the strategy they're going for has paid off in massive ways. Man, it's a crazy game. These teams seem like their runs are a premium. And it's it's going to be really interesting to see what, whichever team moves on, how they're able to limit the Giants and or the Dodgers in, in that in that venture. Yeah. And, and yesterday it was it was 0-0 going into the seventh – or no, in the fourth. No, it was the seventh. Yeah, so, so the, the, the Brewers throw Freddy Peralta – and they have their first scoring chance in the top of the fifth inning. And mm-hmm. they decided to pull Freddie, who was doing great. Um, well, let me back up. I have to talk. Sorry about that. I have to talk about Adam Duvall. Wow. Yeah. Adam Duvall is one of my favorite players. When we let him walk for four and a half million to the Marlins at the end of last year, I was very frustrated. I, I, I tweeted about it, how that was the biggest mistake. And, and what does the guy do? For $4.5 million, he leads the National League in RBIs. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know what we're thinking. Thankfully, we, were, we came to our senses and got him back. But yesterday, okay, it's so the second inning, runs, like you said, at a crazy premium. First inning, first inning, Austin Riley's on third base, Duvall's on first, there's a sack fly to left, plenty deep enough to yell it. Riley's going to score easily. Do you think Duvall, Duvall ends up tagging from first and going to second and get thrown out before Riley can cross home? So the run is, is, is doesn't count. Mm-hmm. And I, I feel like we've done – we do this – we have a base running just crucial error every postseason. Last year was Ozuna. 
Acuna had one in the 2019 playoffs. Do you think Duvall just forgot how many outs there were? Or he was just – You know, I, I don't think it's that. However, I, I hand up, I haven't listened to Snickers' post-game interview. I'm sure he talked about it. I'm sure he was asked about it. Adam Duvall might have been asked about it as well. I, I haven't heard that yet. I'm going to thought Yelich was going to send that thing home. You had Austin Riley, who's fast, not the fastest. And, well, let me go ahead and advance a second. Well, Yelich throws that thing in the second, and here you go, caught with your, you know, caught red-handed, yeah. and he just slapped the tag on him. Um, I don't I don't think he forgot the outs in the inning, but you got to be aware enough to see, hey, that ball's coming in the second. I got to get a run down to that, right. to that run across right. the home. As soon um, as you see that the throw is anywhere close to accurate, if you're going to go, you got to just give yourself up, but – Man, that was – and I really thought – I really thought that that might be – because there have been so little – there have been five, six runs in the first two games combined. I'm really thinking, man, that's really going to come back to bite us. Yeah, and you felt at that moment in the game just like, oof. Like, you just you just stole one from Max Freed and, and his potential to get deep in this game because if another opportunity comes up and his spots do – I know he's a decent hitter, but you're going you're gonna to use your bench when you can. Sure. So, yeah, the, the, the Brewers have a chance to score in the fifth. They pull Freddie Peralta. They got guys on second and third uh, with no out. Danes makes a dive and play to Rob Lorenzo Kane of a probably two RBI hit. Um, and they once after a Kane, they pinch hit. Vogelbach hits one right to Austin Riley. And I don't know what Uri- Urias is doing, uh, the base runner on third base with the, with the infield in, but he just decides to go and and try to score and we, we get him out and luckily get out of that jam. So it was the best possible scenario for us. We got Freddie out of the game and allowed no runs. We got to that bullpen and Adrian Hauser, who was, I mean, Jeff Frankuru, who was color commentating uh, this game. If you watch the game, he said it repeatedly and it's true. He might have the best sinker uh, in all of baseball. The guy gets ground balls. I mean, whenever he wants them, but he, he we, he, I don't know what he was, with the sinker ball, you, you know, you're trying to work down in the zone, try to get ground balls. But, I mean, he threw three three, three of his four pitches to Jock Peterson, who pinched hit in the seventh, were high fastballs. And Jock, I mean, the letter high, but he tomahawks in the right, gives us a 3 nothing lead. I mean, he's three for three in, in pinch hitting in this series. And I see a lot of people, a lot of Braves fans, just like, okay, get Eddie Rosario out of the lineup for Jock. And I and I get it. And especially when Duvall made that crucial base running there, they're like, get – Duvall out, put Jock in. First of all, you're not going to take the guy who led the National League in RBIs out of the game. Rosario, I could understand. However, I think, and I wouldn't be mad either way, but just having that off the bench mm-hmm. whenever you need it, that's that's quite a luxury. And, and like I said, I wouldn't be mad either way to get Jock more at bats, but – I like having him on the bench. So whenever we got, we have guys on, we can call upon him and, and maybe get a big hit. Um, yeah. And I don't know what Freddie Peralta splits are right to left, but you can make a good argument that you would love that extra lefty bat somewhere in that middle part of that lineup. Um, just cause he has such a sweeping slider. It right. just breaks away from the right. I mean, he's so tough, so tough. So as you said, I don't think there's anyone in baseball that hits that up fastball up and in fastball as good as Jock Peterson as a lefty anyways. Right. That unique power swing. I, I have no idea how, but sent that thing into the chop house and right field. And you felt, even though it's a three, nothing game and the Braves bullpen has been sketchy at times, been better recently, but sketchy at times. Yeah. You feel if that's any other team than the Brewers, like get a couple guys on and you never know, but. Right. And it almost felt like it was over at that point. They could have yeah. wrapped it up. For sure. So game four is uh, Tuesday night at 5 o'clock. The Braves are sending out Charlie Morton again, which I love. He's on four days rest. Today. Um, yeah, tonight, Tuesday night. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh, the Brewers, interestingly enough, are throwing uh, Lauer. Uh, what's is it Eric Lauer? He's a, yeah. Yeah, Eric Lauer is a lefty. Um, he's seven and five this year with a 3.19 ERA, a 1.1 whip. Uh, so he's got, he, he was solid for them all year. Yeah. 
but I, I can't imagine they're looking to get, you know, six, seven innings out of them. I think they'll be very quick on the hook to go to the bullpen, which mm-hmm. favors us, uh, the Braves offense. And, and other than Jock, we haven't seen the guys that we're used to really do anything for the Braves. I mean, Freddie, he's got one hit in the series. Austin Riley hadn't done much. Uh, Darno game two, went 0 for 4 with four punchies. He, he squeaked one through yesterday, but mm-hmm. and Dansby had a hit yesterday, but we haven't seen an expl- the explosive offense that the Braves are, are certainly capable of, and I, I think we might see that today, and I'm certainly hoping that's the case because um, I, I feel like we have to win this one. And I know, yeah. and I know we'll have Freed on game five, which I, I'm very confident in, but it's Corbin Burns at home. Do we really want to go and test our luck against, you know, the, the runner-up probably for the Cy Young on the road? I don't think so. So are they not going to use Woodruff or Burns in this game? They might, and, and they certainly could. But, I mean, it, it just looks like Burns is going to be the game five starter. And I, haven't, I haven't read the game notes or anything or – Maybe they could go to Woodruff, but I, I feel like that's I feel like that's very unlikely. Yeah, then that's a lot of innings. The bridge you're probably gonna have to pitch guys like Trevor Richardson or Trevor Richards and things like that. And certainly in a game that 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 rolls that way, I I, I think the Braves have a massive upper hand. Yeah. And you get, and I I love the Braves when they face a lefty. You get Ozzy, you flip Ozzy around to his better side, Austin Riley, Adam Duvall, Travis Darnell. You get a bunch of really, really good hitters from the from the right side of the plate. So definitely like the Braves. Definitely confident going into that one. We were talking last night when the Dodgers were, were playing the Giants in, that, in such a close game. And it seems like the whole world's rooting for the Giants. And and if the Braves advance, I'm rooting for the Giants maybe more than than some Giants fans. Because I simply cannot take another NLCS loss to the Dodgers. Obviously, that's that's considering the Braves make it, mm-hmm. right? And, and it's tough because I'm like, okay, I can't take another loss. But man, it would be even sweeter if we went to the World Series and beat them for it. But mm-hmm. I don't, I just, I don't know if that's worth it. I would think I'd just rather play the Giants, and, and which sounds stupid. Maybe I mean maybe it sounds stupid because the Giants are just like, oh yeah, they don't necessarily have the talent that the Dodgers do. Mm-hmm. but they win yeah and they should be maybe that's the point here is that I don't think anybody would say that the Giants are a scarier team to face than the Dodgers just because of all the names in the, on the Dodgers mm-hmm. roster but I think we we have to say that they're I mean the Giants have nothing for us to be able to say that they're not just or if not more scary than the Dodgers yeah such a tough one because if you look at the lineups they're just not they're almost not comparable on paper and the numbers I'm sure would back that up, but man, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to play the giants. I don't want to play the giants. That's for sure. Yeah, They'll absolutely. hold you to three runs and they're going to squeeze the life out of you and hit two and hit uh, two, two run home runs and find a way to win that game. And it seems like they have an absolute force in the bullpen with uh, this dove all. So yeah. And, and, and Jake McGee, too. I mean, I know he didn't. I don't get it. The guy throws one. I mean, it's no surprise what's coming. It's not like it has a ton of run on it. Guys just don't barrel it up. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. Yeah, I think that is one of the most curious things in baseball right now. This guy, Jake McGee, who is uh, a phenomenal closer for the Giants, especially in the first half. He battled a couple injuries and. And now they're running with this new guy, Duvall, but McGee is still there in the seventh and eighth inning. McGee, I, I wish I had the statistics, but it seemed, I think it's like 80. It's 90, it's over 90%, 90% fastballs. Yeah. 95 right from the left side. Like you said, it doesn't have a lot of tail, doesn't have a lot of run. Yeah, top of the zone every time. You know what you're getting, and guys cannot barrel it no matter what. Mm-mm. It's weak fly balls and punch outs. Yeah. And, and if guys hit them hard, it's right at people, it seems like. It's just yeah. – it's it's crazy. And maybe he knows what he does best. That slider is in his back pocket. It's just enough where the hitter has to respect it, I guess. Yeah. That would be my only, only assumption about that. But it was frustrating watching teams uh, – not frustrating, but weird watching teams play it and swing through 95 up in the zone 
when you know what's coming, it's just right. it's very interesting. It's it's the Giants' way. It seems like. Yeah. Well, live update: the White Sox just got on the board. Uh, Gavin Sheets with a solo homer to center field. They're up one nothing in the bottom of the second. Big for them. Big for them to find a way to jump out to a lead. Yeah, and, especially against the colors. Yeah, and turn it over to Bummer or, and we'll, or the, those guys in the back end of that bullpen. Yeah. Let them take you the rest of the way. All right, so so in the AL, we already know the Red Sox are in the ALCS. We got the, the White Sox and the Astros still to, still to decide. Who, who's your pick to represent? Let me Let me just skip that. At this point, right now, obviously, if I did, did you have the Rays winning? I had them making it to the to the the World Series, but I could not confidently say I thought we were going to win the World Series. I could not confidently say that, but I I did think that we were the best team in the AL, and I truthfully, in a seven game series, I did not see how we would lose four game four out of seven games. Yeah. It just hadn't happened yeah. for the divisional series games. Is it time that we went to seven? You know, this is a tough one because you go from a one card or one game wild card, which is fine. I like that. To seven games right away, it seems a little bit odd. Let's build it up with four. However, you might as well play two more games. You know, you might as well really test out how good is your four starter. How good is it back into your bullpen? Uh, how, I mean, you know, guarantee that home field team gets to go back home no matter what. So. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's, I think you, you nailed it. I, I'm a big fan of the one, one uh, game wild card playoffs, but I think the divisional series games need to go to seven. It, I mean, I don't think anybody would complain about it either. It's more baseball. You yeah. Know, you get two more games for, for, all eight of those teams. Yeah. It's two more games and two, basically two more days. Like, right. uh, like it's not the NBA where it's a game day off game day off. Right. It's not like that. It's, you know, we can play these games back to back and let's test out how good that four starter is, how good your middle relievers are. I think it, it's a better representation of how good the team is. And it, it's a disservice to the home field team. I think because the big part of a seven game series is you're going to get to come home no matter if you drop or, you know, as long as you, you take one of the first two, you're coming back home eventually to play game right. four. So, or game five, sorry. Yeah. You just have to win one of the three to guarantee yourself. Yes. One of the four to, to guarantee yourself coming back home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that point. Um, so at this point, you know, we've gotten to see, a lot of the teams, you know, sometimes it just – some teams just look totally different in the playoffs. Um, so, if you had to pick right now, give me your wild – your World Series matchup and your winner. I'm going to say for my World Series matchup and winner, just because I already know the results and the – or I already know Asher, the Houston's up 2-0 or 2-1 – Maybe if you ask me for the series, I might say Chicago. I like Chicago in that series. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to still lean Red Sox over the Astros in the CS. The bats seem undeniable. The winner of the Dodgers-Giants game, I know that's not what you're asking me here. I want to say the Giants win this series, and I think they're going to face the Braves. And I like the Giants to win that game – or that win that series. So I'm going to go Red Sox-Giants with the Giants winning it all, I think. I like the, I like them a lot. Yeah, and and like we've said countless times, you, you can't, you got to stop. I'm gonna stop counting them out. You got to start believing in them at some point because mm-hmm. then all they, I mean, they just win. I think um, in the American League, I just don't know if the Red Sox pitching is enough. And I know their bats are undeniable, um, but I might have to go. And and, and if I. Let me just say this. So if it was the Astros versus the Red Sox, I think I would have to take the Astros based upon um, they just have, they just have more because they don't have a guy like sale. Mm -hmm. A true. I don't think McCullers is as good, but I think right now, just in the postseason, we haven't seen sales best. And, you know, he's just coming back from, from being out for forever. So 
at their at their peak, I'm saying McCullers is not on sales level. Right now, he might be better, and they have a lot more guys. They can go to Rokiti for a game four, and and he's got a plenty of postseason experience and, and it knows what he's doing as, as a solid pitcher. You're talking about Eduardo Rodriguez. Can't forget about Nathan Avaldi. Right, but and and he's proven he's proven that he's he's up for the big game, but that's certainly a guy that that gets shelled quite a few times. You know, I mean, we've seen that he's kind of a uh, he's either on or, or he's well off. Yeah. Um, so I think I have to take the Astros representing the American League as so much as I don't want to, and I think I gotta agree with you on the Giants. Uh, they just win, and and I. I'm not hating our ch- the Braves' chances against them if it if, it, if that is the matchup. Mm-hmm. I think that we have uh, timely enough hitting. I think that's a good uh, and, and, and just watching McGee and, and Doval last night, I feel like we have guys that are going to be able to put up better at bats than what I saw from the mm-hmm. Dodgers last night, and, and certainly and, and Muncie is a big part of that. Uh, it's kind of the the bad at bats by the Dodgers in the, in the eighth and ninth. So I think it'll be, it'll be a, a very good series if that ends up what it is, but I, you know, I can't take a team that won 107 games over. I mean, I should, how many games did the yeah. Braves win? It was, um, it won, it was like 87. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's how I'm going to look. Let me ask you. 88 games. What's up? Is Waskar back? Waskar is yeah he's back and available. He was warming up in the pen in game one, mm-hmm. and uh, he would probably be the guy in a game four. Like like we said, Morton is going to today because we've had he's had enough rest. But in in a championship series and a seven game series, I'm sure we would see Waskar start at least. He would start a game three or four. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and he's another guy, man. He's got he's got all the talent. He throws strikes. He's awesome. Yeah, when he throws strikes and when, and when that slider's there, but, you know, he certainly has a tendency to get hit up. And it seems like a guy, if you get to him early, he's never quite able to rebound. Uh, mm-hmm. So you kind of have a got to have a quick hook. So I would take the Giants over the Astros if I had to choose right now. But And, and we see in the postseason that, you know, the Braves, they, you know, they had to overcome a lot. And, and as a Braves fan, I'm watching all these games. And I'm like, man, if we only had Acuna, like, wow. Um what a difference it would make. And obviously if we had him, we might not have brought in Solaire, Duval, and Jock and Eddie. It's crazy we brought in four outfielders. Yeah. So it's probably bring in two of those guys and two of them we don't if if is uh still fully healthy. And um but it's it's hard not to watch and see, you know, say like, man, what if we had him right now? It's just it's an MVP, MVP caliber player every year and, yeah. and it's tough Absolutely. to overcome that. And uh and um the be- one of the better fielders you can you can put out there, and you might be playing center field right now. With would you yeah, be playing center field or right absolutely field? Absolutely would be. Absolutely, he would be playing center. And right uh, now, that's a I would do on center field is not someone you're just stoked about playing center field. Like you saw Kevin Kiermeyer over the week prove to you why you need a guy who can. He's going to save you some runs out there in the outfield, or yeah. save you some base hits. And you're just not sure Adam Duvall is going to give you that. No, not not at all. And we saw Kane do it yesterday. I mean, he ran into the fence, but that was a phenomenal play. I mean, the, unfortunately, the ground uh, causing yeah. jar that ball loose. But that was, I mean, Duval doesn't come close to making that play. Uh, but I mean, we've seen him plenty of postseason in the past, just like I mean, the Nationals uh, two years ago, and and the Royals years ago. And and it's just a team that you know finds a way to to overcome things and get in the playoffs, and they just get hot. And I'm. I'm really hoping that's the, the case with the Braves this year. 88 wins, certainly, I mean, they're fewest in a couple of years. They were still able to win the division. But I, I, I'm hoping that uh, that script just plays out for us. We just get hot at the right time and the bats come alive and uh, we're able to make a run in this thing. And Yeah. yeah. I love the pressure is on the – the expectations and the pressure is no longer on the Braves to win. It's it's absolutely on the Dodgers and or the Giants to win these games because they, they're the better team, better record. You look at the lineup top to bottom, probably or maybe not the Giants lineup, but the Dodgers lineup for sure. You're like, yeah, that lineup looks better on paper, no wow. doubt. So pressure's off a little bit. Just, you know, if 
if you can get the, those six innings from Morton and Freed and Ian Anderson with uh, two two or three runs, I think it give you quality starts. You feel pretty good about where you're at, I think. Sure. So I'll ask you one more. Is is as a Rays fan, uh, who 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 are you pulling for for the rest for the rest of October and in the beginning of yeah. November? I'm pulling for the Braves without a doubt. I mean, it's a team that, like growing up, I've always been you know, me watching because they're because you know local network used to have them on. Sure. Um, you, you know the uh, the Jumbo Shrimper in Jacksonville. And it used to have their affiliate. One of the who's the Braves affiliate? The Triple A. It's uh, Gwinnett, which they're always in town. You know? They used to always be in town. So I feel I've seen different players come up through that, and obviously the Marlins are close in the division. So you got to see some of their talent play the Braves. Yeah, I would like to see the Braves here. Um, I think they deserve it as much as any team here. But the Giants are a fun story to root for. Just. I really don't want to see any any AL team win it. I just yeah. the Red. I hate. I mean, I don't love the Red Sox, and I'm not sure the Astros have many fans outside of Houston. And they certainly yeah. had their controversies in the past few years. I'm not sure people are, are too excited about seeing them win. And yeah, and the White Sox have they beat up on their division, their very weak division, and had a losing record outside of that division to other teams. So. I don't really know how good they are. Right, yeah. I think uh, anybody but the – I don't want the Red Sox and the Astros. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, it, if – honestly, I would take that if if the Dodgers – I just can't do it to myself. Um, I can't handle another Dodgers. Uh, oh, don't, don't give me another Dodgers. Although, if they lose, they're, they're going to come back bigger and badder than ever like they do every year. They're going to sign Trey Turner and Scherzer and – get someone else and pay someone else and they're going to be right there again. So, yeah, it seems like it's just unavoidable at this point, which is why I think the Giants have been such a welcome surprise just because, I mean, we're um, baseball fans outside of LA fans are, are kind of just against the whole model of, you know, get whoever. And, and I know that I, I've certainly been, been someone who said that before in, in the past that the Dodgers are just, you know, buying, you know, whoever, and it's kind of just like making a super team. But honestly, like I, I've had to go back and look. You look at their roster, and a lot of it is a lot more than we give them credit for is homegrown. So you give him Bueller and your Bueller and Urias. That's two and three guys right now in the lineup. You look up and down the lineup: Chris Taylor, Max Muncy, Cody Bellinger, Gavin Lux, uh, Will Smith. All those guys are, are are homegrown guys that they brought up in their – our farm system and or got them early in the, enough in their careers before they were, you know, big time names. So yeah. certainly with Muncie is he didn't never, he never did anything with the A's and comes over. Right. And, right. Yeah. So uh, uh, the guy who can play everywhere and Justin Turner, who sure. was with a bunch of other teams was never good. And then yeah. came over to, or was never that good anyways, and came over to the Dodgers and was a, a, a fixed, a guy who was going to play third base for you every single day. Yeah. So I think we owe it, owe it to the, a little less hate towards the Dodgers because they, they certainly have a lot m- more uh, homegrown talent than, than maybe perceived. Right. Um, for sure. So it's definitely been an interesting postseason so far. Uh, and hopefully we get uh, more of that, a lot of close games so far. And, and obviously that's, that's what baseball as a whole, we, that's what, that's what we want. Uh, mm-hmm. So game fours and game fives are happening uh, right now and, and tomorrow. And we'll have our four, our final four teams decided at the very latest by Thursday. And uh, it'll, it, I'm I, I'm excited for this one, man. It's, it's like you said, it's just the Braves don't have uh, the, they don't have as that the, as high of expectations as years past. We're kind of playing uh, on a free roll. It seems like you know we're not we were supposed to be here, but mm-hmm. because of the injuries and everything that's happened. Uh, we're certainly not expecting to go much further than, than the divisional round. So the pressure's off. We're just able to go out there and play. And, and I'm excited, man. Obviously, we got to get a win today or Friday. It's certainly not over. The Brewers are more than capable than, than shutting our offense down and, and, and beating us. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, it'll be a good one against Lauer, Lauer versus Morton today. Mm-hmm. And uh, later, 
Di Scafani for the Giants against, uh, I believe it's just come out that Bueller's starting uh, tonight. So, and that one's at nine. So that'll be a big one. Uh, by the time this goes out, that game will be, uh, that, that'll be final. Uh, so we'll be on to game fives if necessary, if the Dodgers and the Brewers win today and if the White Sox win. Uh, so a lot of more interesting baseball to be played. And that will wrap up our time today on Take Me Out to the Podcast. Ryan Williams, our special guest, thanks for, for being on. As Thanks, always, uh, I'm your host, Jason Hamby, and we will be back in two weeks to discuss uh, a little bit later in the postseason and, and come World Series time. So, as always, we thank you for watching, and this has been Take Me Out to the Podcast.